Welcome to Sacred Rebels Podcast, where we discuss life after trauma as we question societal norms and shatter stigmas. Are you a woman who longs for a sense of community and understanding? Well, stick around. There is a seat for you here. This is your host, Tay. And co-host, Amy. And we're just two best friend millennial moms and entrepreneurs navigating life and motherhood while on a spiritual healing journey. We don't do surface level, and we're definitely not your typical moms, so let's dig deep. We plan to cover it all and take you behind the scenes as we share our personal experiences, learn more about the holistic side of healing, and introduce all the incredible humans we've met along the way. Join us as we share the good, the bad, and the ugly side of healing. We hope to help you step into your power. Thanks so much for listening. Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Sacred Rebels. Tonight we have Jillian here and we're so excited. Amy is going to introduce her after our big deep breath. One hand on the heart, one hand on the belly. Big inhale through the nose. Lift up, rise up, fill up. And then exhale, let it go. I am so, we are so extremely excited to have Jillian Hanna. She is the nourished breathwork and yoga facilitator. And she is a longtime friend of mine, a spiritual sister, all the things. And I'm just so honored to sit here and have this conversation with her. And she pulled a card. So she did. We did. I'm so happy to be here. I love you guys. And, uh, you know, to be a part of Sacral Rebels podcast, yeah. like, it's a big fucking deal. Oh, stop. <laughs> I was, like, nervous. <laughs> um, but I, I do. I love this card. I love this deck. The deck is Sacred Rebels as well, and so it's just so perfect. And the card I picked for this evening is called Inner Trust. And I just want to read this, uh, the last part of the description where it's the healing practice, and it's something that we can all do and the listeners do together yes. if they want. Love it. If you're not driving. <laughs> So go ahead and place your hands on your hearts, and we'll just take a deep breath together in. Exhale. And say to yourself, or you can think it or say out loud, I trust in the love of my heart. And now place your hands on your stomach and say or think out loud. I trust in my instincts. And then place your hands a little bit lower on your belly and say or think, I trust in the flow of life. I trust in the flow of life. I trust myself. I trust in my higher self. I trust in this life. When I don't know, my higher self does know. I am always guided by the wise voice of my higher self within my heart. Deep breath in. Empty out. So good. Epic. I just feel like. It's just the perfect energy here and the conversation that we've already had. Mm-hmm. To bring <laughs> oh, no, we should have hit record like 20 minutes ago. It's all right. Even an hour ago, me and Jillian met out in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, every time we talk, we're just like full body chills. Oh, my God. You know, know. it's just great. And it's but like, that's when you know. It is when you know. And I You're feel aligned. We're aligned. Exactly. And like that's all the practices that we are both like so, all three of us are so passionate about. It's yeah. just giving this win- wisdom through these practices so that people can trust in themselves yes. and be divinely guided by their hearts. And, you know, what a place to live in I know. right now. Oh. I know. It's epic. I'm so grateful every day that I get to live in this True. reality, right? Like my own reality and goosebumps. And I, we call them goosebumps, but they're like God bumps. You just feel so aligned. You're like, oh, my God. And I, I say it often, too, um, a lot when I'm talking in treatment centers that – when you get those or when you hear something that resonates so deep in your soul that you have a body reaction to it, mm. like that, trust that. Mm-hmm. Like that is a message that is going to work for you. Mm. Like believe and honor and trust. Even those, that's one of those little small things are happening when you start to learn to start trusting yourself. When you follow that, right? You hear the thing and then you're like, oh, okay, I had a reaction. I'm going to go do that. And you get this epic result and you're like, 
I totally. trusted myself. Yeah. But yeah, and the more you do that, the more you like follow those like inklings, like the more you realize like this is where I'm supposed to be. And no yeah. matter how I feel like sometimes like people get these like intuitive hits and then they just like you know, the oh they don't think about it too much or like, nah, that's weird or too woo woo. Yeah. But it's like, no, that's like your soul, that's your God self, like being like, yeah. This is a direction. These are the people you're supposed to be with. These are the conversations you're supposed to have. And yeah. Everything, you know. Yeah. I agree. I totally agree. I think it's all about learning to learning to really tune into that though, right? Like you said, like some people hear those things or feel those things, but they don't like lean into it. Like they lean away. Because they're like, eh, I don't know about that. You know, like we have to learn. Because that was like one of my biggest self-limiting beliefs. It's like I, from so much childhood trauma and just all of it, like I couldn't trust myself. Like I didn't trust my judgment. And I didn't trust, you know, my instincts. And I'd kind of always rely on outside like people to be like, okay, I have this and this opportunity. Which one should I do? Because I don't fucking know. Or like I, I can't feel or I did feel, but like I just like didn't believe it or didn't mm-hmm. want to like, you know. So then you have all these outside people coming in and then it's all, all your inner knowing is skewed because you're listening to everybody else and all their opinions and their insight. And you're just like, okay, let me go back to me and what I think and what that what that first initial thought was or idea or even like when people like dream big and they're like oh I had this like idea but I don't know it's like no go with it Mm -hmm. go with it go with it yeah you're having those ideas for a reason exactly and I think that when you're living like this then it's like you get inspired because you're like you take that action that's so scary and then you realize like the net appears and it's like oh but it does it takes courage and I think like that's again like going back to the everything that we're doing it's to lodge out the stress lodge out the trauma lodge out this limiting beliefs so that we can really you know start taking those leaps and moving in those directions because some people I feel like are so blocked they don't even like maybe even have an inkling and they're like what is like I feel like you might already been there a little bit that's how I was yeah I feel like I was just so blocked off like to, to any of it and now look at you. I know. Why? Look at you, girl. Blown the fuck open over here. <laughs> <laughs> All the things. All There's the only things. one way, baby. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, up. It's uh, up. Yeah, really. Yeah. And even when it feels like you're going down, you're still actually going, going up. up. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, my God. That's so good. When yeah. you're going down, you're actually going up. I love yeah, that. Yeah, you think you're going down, but like... And every time you look back in those moments when you're like, yeah. how the fuck am I going to get through this? Like, the, how is this happening? Why is this happening? And then you're like, oh, shit, that's why I have it. Like, exactly. it's fine. Like, And 100%. I was actually elevating yeah. Yeah. in that shit. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely see that. Even in your journey, just watching you, like, you know, you go through these. We all do. We were yeah. in places and then it's like, you know, fuck, you got to go through some shit, that dark night of the soul stuff where yeah. your life is just absolutely un- uprooted. But it is, it's in those times that you're leveling up, you know, as long as you keep that like attitude of like, okay, like, what is this teaching me? Like, you know, there's always a reason for everything. Yeah. And like what we were saying earlier is like, Amy, every time like I talk to Amy, there's like, shit's happening or whatever dark night of the soul every fucking time i'm like <laughs> chapter I'm dead three, ass chapter like, 10 I'm fucking cat and i'm like i'm ready to be my mind life because i really just don't <laughs> want to fucking have another dark night of the soul they're so fucking painful i know but look at how much you level up I like know. honestly i know Literally, I'm, the Amy I'm never that I shocked. Knew. I'm never shocked. She calls me and I'm like, it doesn't even fucking surprise me anymore. Like the stuff she says, I'm just like, yep, could have could have saw that coming. <laughs> yeah, like before she like reincarnated in this lifetime, she told God, like, dude, I want to learn all the yes. lessons, <laughs> all of the in things. this one lifetime, so <laughs> I can be fucking done. All of them. <laughs> it's huh, a wrap. Sad. Well, yeah. Jillian and I, it's beautiful because we were talking about it. And sometimes I like, I forgot, honestly, about the story that you said about me and Jillian have known each other for what, 12 years? It's been yeah. 12 years yeah. now. Like, we yeah. came around the same time. We're we both did. like very in like that dark. Yeah, place. it's so place. beautiful. I know. Yeah. Like, we should be dead. Amazing. Yeah. Based on our actions in our previous lifetimes. Yeah. What so tell us like? about Jillian. Yeah. Give us a little bit of Jillian's backstory <sighs> and how yeah. you got here. All right. Well, so it all started when my mom, who has a history of mental illness, anxiety, depression, all runs in her family, also witches, Mm -hmm. met my dad, 
who comes from a family of a lot of alcoholism and anger issues. And so they fell in love and then they had me and I (laughs) inherited both of those, (laughs) you know. And so I I grew up in Massachusetts and um, I was always such a sensitive, like extremely sensitive soul. I still am. And I and I've learned to like really uh, appreciate my softness, you know, yeah. because I tried to like put on an act, like, yeah, and yeah. I just couldn't, you know. But um, yeah, I grew up really. I was very very sensitive, and then my parents, like, they had th- there was three of us. Boom, boom, boom. I was first, then my brother Zach, then my brother Jordan, and we grew up in Mass. And you know, my parents did the best that they could, but. It's a different generation. It was a different time. And my mom had no coping skills. And she was also not supported. So Mm. she was very depressed a lot. And so I took on this nurturing role early. Like her needs matter more than mine. And and it's not to say that that was her like perception, of course. But that was just my experience with that energy of her. And, um, you know, I remember her always talking to me about her pain. And I was always so compassionate and there for her. Um, but I felt like when it was, you know, my turn to be held or to be nurtured, it was like, I didn't really have that. And I also had, I almost died as a baby. I had lead poisoning, which was, you know, difficult for them. So my first memories are of like me as a baby in the hospital. And I remember seeing my mom in the corner, like, and she was terrified. And so like, I just feel like my first memories were like, intense anxiety not yeah, tainted kind not, of not yeah and like not trusting in life not trusting being in this body and so um yeah I grew up like that and my you know I had my brothers they were wild and crazy and like thank god we had each other my parents my mom we were really poor we didn't have much and you know I grew up and I think as I grew up more into middle school age like I really started to spiral Mm. a little bit (laughs) that's when it starts happening same yeah and you know um but I always had like my mom's side of my family like I said I I joke that they're witches but I really believe like I get their spiritual wisdom from her yeah even though they were all like drug addicts and self like they were sensitive souls and I just believe that about addicts I believe like yeah they mm-hmm. use because they, they had to numb out because everything's so intense, so intense. Yeah. I believe the same yeah. should I say it all the time like addicts and alcoholics are the most beautiful intelligent people that I know yeah they I, just don't know how to channel any of that shit into anything productive 100% agree yeah. with that and it wasn't supported it wasn't yeah. and and so and when to run from it well so yeah that's what I was just gonna say like so I started having like weird experiences when I was like I was seeing things I was seeing like oh wow yeah this is weird but I was seeing no, things it's not weird at all I believe that stuff you know and hearing things and I would go to my mom and my mom was more terrified than I was and so that terrified me mm. so I like was just freaking the fuck out <laughs> and I was like I couldn't sleep I couldn't like and I was hearing voices and uh you know it was really it was honestly really tough but um I started using NyQuil at night because I couldn't sleep. And I was so scared at night. So NyQuil had that. Yeah, and so it had that stuff. And so I started using that for that reason. But I would also, you know, say that I was bullied a little bit in in the sense where uh, some family members even would call me, like, ugly and fat. And I was just – it was awful. And so I I just, like, had, like, no self-esteem. I was very – very insecure and then so we moved to New Hampshire and so starting over I lived in Londonderry and it was like Londonderry they had money there and I was like oh my god you know like I remember my friends making fun of my dad's car like it was so and I think about it now and it's like fucking assholes yeah you know so superficial I literally posted I literally posted something on Facebook today all about name brand shit how it doesn't fucking matter and like only parent we we like condition our kids to think that name brand shit matters. Your kids don't fucking know the difference. Like they it's don't. you they it. mm-hmm. putting that shit onto them. Like, yeah, same, dude, I shop at Walmart and I'm like proud to shop at Walmart. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. So, you know, there was just a blend of all that stuff happening at the same time. And so I just was like, mm. I started to go inward and really hate myself. And, uh, you know, it started with like an eating disorder, full blown. I lost my hair. I lost my nails. 
Um, you know, but it was like I was suffering so silently. Like it was mm. like nobody cared. At least nobody said anything like, Joe, like, how's it going? Like, what's going on? It was like I had nobody in my life to look out for me. Yeah. And um, and it's not I have a great relationship with my parents now. And so it's like things have grown and shifted so much. And, you know, I don't ever want to make them feel bad about that. But that's just my truth. That's my experience. Yeah, I say course. that all the time whenever I share anything about like my childhood. <laughs> I'm always like, I have such a great relationship with my parents now. And it's like so hard. But it was such an important part of my life. And yeah. that we know better now. And we're able to see the programming that they had and that they weren't prepared. And we had these expectations because of TV, like of what a, like, yep. a perfect parent was. So we're like blindsided yeah, yeah you know what I mean and you're just <laughs> like or you see your friends family dynamics yeah, and you're like different. just could wish that you could have yeah have that family dynamic like yeah definitely yeah. like my dad I feel like he had there was no he was so blocked from his own emotions like he couldn't deal with anything and so whenever he would ask me to do something if there was any sort of friction like his way of dealing with it would he would silent scorn me so then he wouldn't talk to me yeah and so it was like I just was like this lost person I just felt like I couldn't express emotions yeah I felt like I had nobody to talk to I felt insane because I was having all these crazy experiences and so I was numbing out and then I started um you know at eating disorder that stuff um but then I started stealing alcohol and it was instant for me. Like, yeah, you know, the relief that I needed something. And yep. that was the answer to all my problems yep. to the point where I started drinking before class. Like, and then, you know, fast forward to high school, I had a piano recital and I remember I was like, there's no fucking way I'm getting in front of the class. Like I was so terrified to even look anybody in the eye. Like yep, I was same. such, I was so, oh, it's so sad. I just I know. wish I do. I do this in the healing work you go back to that little girl mm -hmm. and just hold her because yeah. she was so sweet and innocent and just needed somebody and just terrified of everything absolutely I like. absolutely I was terrified of everything yeah the inner child healing work and breath work and like just really loving and like being what you needed that's all you have to do now is like really focus on being who you needed yeah mm -hmm. when you were a child and yeah. realizing that you like, yeah, as a child, you did need somebody mm -hmm. for that. But, like, now you're capable to, like, know and be that person for yourself now. Mm -hmm. Because you're never going to allow somebody else to be that for you yeah. if you can't be it for yourself. Absolutely. Because you're never going to feel deserving of it. You're yeah. never going to feel good enough yeah. to receive it from somebody else. So if true. If you can't fucking do it for your goddamn self. So true. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like that that and a God energy coming in yeah. is the best form of yeah. love I've ever received yeah and even to this day if I get triggered and I'm like in my shit which happens because it's never ever going to be over because this is we're never healed. the human yeah. game yeah. but it is it's always going back to the inner child for me always yeah. going Same. back something has triggered and, and you Same. know and that's okay and it's like yeah you know that's how I parent now too right it's like I'm grateful for those experiences because it's almost brought me like closer to my kids and now I'm able to not only reparent myself but I'm like showing up for my kids in a way mm. that I didn't, you know, I didn't get. Yeah. So. It's so special. I know you have such like divine, feminine, mothering energy. Like you're just, you seem like such Me? a nurturer. Yeah. Oh my God. And I think it's because. That's like the biggest compliment. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. No. And thank God, you know, and that's, this is like what the shift is. This is like life is changing because we're yeah. all, we've gone through all this stuff and we're like taking ownership of our healing you yeah. know and yeah breaking generational trauma right here fucking a and stop looking outside like yeah. we have it's all an inside job like we yeah. have people that like there's these practices that we're doing mm -hmm. that guide you to you yeah. it's mm -hmm. not me mm -hmm. i'm yeah. just here because i know how fucking painful it is to live that way so now I've done the work and now I'm just ready to share that with you to show you how powerful you are. Absolutely. You're just holding space for them with love. But at the same time, I feel like for me personally, like I like going to people who I know have been through fucking hell yep. because I need to know yep. that they know. Amen, sis. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Amen. And it's like, yeah. otherwise it's like, yeah. Eh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's something to it. You can't learn it. it in a book. You no, can't you learn can't. what we have in yeah. a book. No, it's embodied. You fully need embodied. life experiences, period. Yeah. And that's why when you're going through the fucking shit again, you're like, okay, yep. like you're, you're leveling up and there's a reason why and, you know. 
The shit always means you're leveling up. Yes. I just want to let you guys know out there, if you're in some shit right now, you're yeah. leveling up. So, so get excited because it's get, a good thing. Get really fucking excited that you're having a shitty ass time in your life right now because the I other do. side of it, you're like, wait. Yes. Woo. <laughs> That's how I literally when COVID was happening, I was like, fuck yes. Like the world feels like it's falling apart. To f- yeah, it's to exciting. come back together. Yes. yes. I'm like, it needs to break down. When yeah. it first happened, like the first month, not even gonna lie, I was like terrified. And my husband was like always like the one to be like, babe, you're falling for it. You're falling for it. And I'm like, no, we have to sanitize all our fucking I groceries. The groceries, you bring the groceries. I was like, eight months pregnant, guys. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah. It was fucking. I was pregnant scary. with his. Yeah. Well, it was not, toward, fucking... not the beginning, but towards the end, yeah. I was, in the beginning, yeah. I was fucking eight months. I gave birth to Zoe in April of 2020. Yeah, like, crazy. crazy. Dead ass Pandem- lockdown, like <laughs> pandemic. Like yeah, the that world was, was shut down. Yeah, because it shut down in March, right? Yeah. 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 Oh my god, that no one could come see the like, baby. It took me like two months. For me yeah. to be like, okay, okay, maybe you're right. Like, this is fucking bullshit. And then I was like, okay, I'm excited <laughs> about this. This is going to be good. This is going to be yeah. an awakening because I was watching the awakening happen on social media. I feel like that's when it started. Aww. People started getting loud. People started talking on my social media. I started seeing all this shit about, you know, human resonance and the world. Ascension. And, 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 mm-hmm. Yeah, ascension and all, all this awakening. And I was like, okay, <laughs> this is happening. Like, yeah. I'm in it. I'm here for You're it. Here like, for let's it. go. Let's go. Yeah. I feel Pioneers. like moms too. I just feel like, I feel like I, I was watching this thing. I was sending it to my friend earlier and it was like, haha, the joke was like, everybody has to go stay home. But now the joke is like, all right, we're staying home. We're homesteading. We're making our own yeah. food. We're buying land. We're creating our own schedules. They almost like pushed us into this Thank new wave. You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Like literally. Yeah. Okay. So you were not – we got – well, this will probably happen a lot for us. Yeah, we like, go on tangents, tangents. But let's bring it back because we're okay. – I want your <laughs> yeah, story. Yeah, we want the story. This is – it's not It's not about the story. It's the hope, right? Like yeah. there's women that are going to have the same – you know, we just want to hear where you come from and now look how fucking much you're killing it. I know. I feel, I feel better than I ever have, ever in my life. And I'm just so like – so thankful that I didn't give up on myself. Yeah. But, yeah, so it was just – I was in high school, drinking my life away. Relationships were awful, just made me feel worse about myself. I also, like, just didn't know how to be in relationship with anybody, not myself, not with a human being. So, you know, I had to go down a really dark path with that. And, you know, I'm grateful because I feel like it brought me to my knees young. So I was 23. Well, I was, like – Actually, I was like 21, 22, and I was surprisingly still in college, and I just feel like God was looking out for me I always. was 21. Really? Yeah. I was young. And to think like to be that young like and have, yeah. there, there's a reason. And yeah. so I'm grateful that I always had that in me the back too. of my head. Like, this isn't how I want to live. Like, I knew yeah. something was wrong, and I just felt like, do you guys remember, oh my God, it was like the old... Uh, I don't know if it was on MTV, but it was like the old rehab shows with Dr. Drew. What was yes, that called? Yes, of course. Oh, my God. Um, what was that called? It Wasn't it called just rehab? It might have been. And, and then the, there was a commercial. They would have a commercial. Yeah. And it was like, if you are you suffering with addiction? It would be like a person like screaming their head off, but it was silent. Like, that was me. Yeah. It was like I was in so much pain, but like no one noticed me yeah, in the room. No. I was like invisible I really felt invisible so I somehow was in college like I said and um, my last semester I got to take electives I was feeling invisible (laughs) (laughs) and I was in college it was the last year I had like three classes I needed to graduate and so the classes that were open were chakra healing alternative medicine and then a stress meditation class so it's like I signed up for those and that just change the trajectory of my life Mm. and my professor yeah my professor she was mrs andrews she was like a larger older woman with glasses she was the first person to look me in the eye and say what's going on with you and she was like an energy healer which i didn't even know what energy healing was back then like you like she knew yeah Yeah, she felt it saw it all of it yeah and i was just like i think i'm an alcoholic like i'm struggling i just fucking just let her have it and it was yeah. the first time i said it out loud to anybody <laughs> trauma <The> verbally <laughs> diarrhea i was like Drama. how much time do you have lady <laughs> and she was like 
you got to go to those meetings in the churches. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Not really understanding. <laughs> All right. I went home and I Googled meeting in churches and I didn't find anything. Yeah. But the whole point was, is like, that was like, that was the seed that was planted in me. And it was like, she every week we would do a different chakra like workshop so I learned about like the root then you go up you know the sacral and all that stuff and every week I got up and shared my story relating to the chakras and I'd bawl my fucking eyes out and they all just held space for me and she would like give me tinctures of stuff like she was just like a medicine woman sorry and uh I yeah that. and that was when I was like I want to get clean and um I was meditating and I was praying and I was like doing all the things and that. she introduced me to acupuncture and yoga and, and cranial sacral therapy and um, just all these different healing modalities and that just was like it sparked something inside me that was like this is where I got to go. Yeah, this is it. And so, uh, yeah, so I tried all those things and, you know, it took me a while. It took me like a year and a half after that to actually get sober um, but I was at least trying. Yeah. And I remember in the right direction. Yeah. And I'm failing in the right direction. <laughs> yeah. Which is fine. I yeah. mean, there was intention there. And I remember telling her, oh my God, the craziest thing happened. So I was living in Fitchburg, which I don't know if you know. It's Picked up dope a few times there. It's fucking awful. I went downhill <laughs> fast there. You know, I got into drugs and that was, you know, great because it really brought me down faster. But yeah, I was in, living in Fitchburg and, um, I remember I was blow drying my hair and I was like crying. I think I I'd gone to the doctor too and I told her I was depressed. So she gave me medicine. Don't know what it was, but I was drinking on it. And then I got worse. Like I was like doing like yep. dark thoughts. Yeah. Very dark thoughts. And um I was like not doing good. I remember like sitting in my closet and like looking at myself. I was like a skeleton. I was like so skinny and like this is my fucking life like this is where I'm at I hated myself I just done something fucked up too like I fucked over my best friend my roommate mm. I did some fucked up shit that I was not proud of that I wouldn't have probably done if I was sober yeah of course so there was shame so much shame and um anyways I was like I got I want to like I need help I got to do this and I was like all of a sudden my phone started ringing and this is like back in the day like I had a flip phone or something and it was like the song that played on my phone was the Bob Marley song, Don't Worry About a Thing, Everything's Gonna Be, be All Right. right. Oh, I got chills. And there was no text, there was no call, just that song played on my phone. And that was like, okay, heard. And, uh, you know, fast forward, like, anytime that, that song always comes on when I'm struggling. And I bawl my eyes out because I joke that Bob Marley's like my spirit guy. Yeah. <laughs> Your higher power. Like, it comes on. Yeah. So it's like that was just like it was hope for me. I'm like, okay. And I just didn't give up. And I um I decided to move back and with my parents in London Dairy and I got a job and I got a job at Carabas in Bedford and um the boss there was the one he helped me get sober and it was like it was another bottom that I had where I Got down on my knees at 2 a.m. after slugging some fucking vodka. Yeah. Hating my life again. You know, my brother was in the next room, like, shooting dope. My boyfriend I was trying to get rid of. It was, you know, a mess. And uh, I prayed to God and said, you know, if you're real, I don't know what you are or if you can help me, but I need help. Yeah. And the next day my boss was like, Jillian hey, how you doing? It was another person who looked me in the eye. That's all I need. I just need someone to yeah. pay attention to me. Just see me. Yeah, <laughs> just, just see, see me. me. See my pain. And I just lost it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm struggling. I need help. And so he's like, meet me here. I'm going to link you up with this lady. And, and that's what he did. And that was like my journey into getting sober. And I met all these incredible women Amazing. in Manchester. And I yeah, it, it really Indeed launched it. me. That's where we met. So I met you at St. Pius, which was my, like, home group because <laughs> I love the loony noonies. I love, I love, I always gravitated towards, like, the old the people. And the new, same. <laughs> really? The same. Yeah, I didn't love, I didn't love young people meetings. I hated I it. I went to the 630 meeting. I think it meeting. was trash. I went to the 630 a.m. meeting, like, oh, the first light of the day. drunk. Yeah. yeah, like, still high, like, 
We're just like getting up at six o'clock in the morning to go sit at this meeting. I'm like, what am I doing here? Like, why did I fucking do drugs and stay up till 5 a.m., get an hour of sleep to go sit at this meeting still fucked up? Like, what am I doing? Yeah, but that's the good thing about you. You show the fuck up no matter what. You never gave up. Ever. I know. That's how. So, yeah, I met Amy at St. Pius and she was like, I don't know. It was like something was going on. You had just had a baby yeah and then Gavin, yeah and yeah, then Gavin i was did. in the hospital and yeah. then i was i went to rehab after yeah. it was like right before I, yeah yeah and so yeah, i met amy and it was just so funny because i was pregnant because I, I like they're same similar yeah they're similar age and uh i would we didn't have anything like me and i was together with my boyfriend for like nine months and then I got pregnant on accident yeah. you know god accident but still yeah accident yeah. we had nothing like I I literally when I got sober I got a trash bag of clothes and this lady yeah. let me live with her and I shared a bed with her eight-year-old daughter but can you like think about that like I would never do that no I would never let a stranger but she just trusted me and you know it worked out for me and I'm actually still in touch with that uh that girl now she's I 21 yeah but yeah, so I had nothing and Amy, I must have told you that or something. And she's like fucking going through all this hell. And she's just like, yeah, well, I'll give you, you know, this and this for the baby. And she was just, I was like, wow, like for her to be going through all that stuff. And she's so, so thoughtful. I was like, like giving it awesome. away. <laughs> she's like, just take Here, it. You need it. <laughs> just keep it. <laughs> That's Amy, though. I know. She's literally I like know. that. Always. I know. Yeah. I do know and this. And then we would like. We wouldn't see each other, and then we'd, like, have, like, I remember one time we ran into each other at the mall. Yes. And we were, like, a couple years sober. Yes. And we, like, I didn't even, I recognized you, but I was, like, you didn't. You had, like, a shaved head. You had, like, red (laughs) hair. Like, the Amy before, just brown, long hair. Yeah. And you were, like, this, like, fashion, like, out of a magazine (laughs) or something. And I was, like what the fuck i'm like and then i fat and i i had your number from the when she and so i was like amy like did we just see each other and then you're like yeah i'm doing good and all that stuff and it was just like i was so proud of you and it it is we've had like parallel paths Mm -hmm. and every time we come together this is what we were saying before you got here it's just like i feel like you see the growth we see the growth in each other it's almost like when you're running on a track and someone's like not that she's going in a different direction, but like you're slapping high fives yeah, on yeah. the way. On you're the like, way keep by. going. <laughs> yeah, fucking, you, you know it. what I mean? Yeah. Like we're not stopping. And I we're like the guy in the Adam <laughs> Carey movies. Like you got this. <laughs> <laughs> just like pops up out of nowhere. That's literally how we are. Because we've always just been like, fuck yeah, so supportive. You've that. never been like bad blood with me, and I've never been with you. And it's like I've just. I'm just like yeah, cheer and but each we're other doing on. the same thing, being yeah. yoga teachers, yeah. like finding that path, doing the yeah. exact same shit. There's never been competition. No, like, and no. the beautiful thing about it, and I'm just so it, I didn't even realize. She said two years ago was this week we were in Colorado when I did my first breathwork session yes. with you. Yeah, and I'll never fucking forget when I was in that session. And I wrote Forgive, like, on the notebook. Do you remember that? Yes, chills. And then we played the song, song, Forgive. I have Like, chills. I had wrote it. Like, I had got up out of the breathwork session, and I wrote it. And I was having this huge thing about my sexual trauma and the mm. person who's sex. And all I wrote, I wrote it in big fucking letters. I wrote it in Forgive. And then you and Sid were sitting at the top, and the song came on, and we had the headphones on, and I picked up God. my fucking notebook, and right. I, like, showed you guys the word, and I'm like... Gotcha. Just fucking <laughs> unrest wow. my goddamn mind. And the white buffalo, remember? Yeah. Like my thing with the white buffalo yeah. woman, and I had the single room, and the white buffalo yes. was on my fucking the above my bed, yeah. and I like, yeah, which again, is the signs, energy. synchronicities, yeah. always, yes. always happening when always. you're aligned. It yeah. is, yeah, it was special. it's like little. And we still I feel like that's little reminders. <laughs> the fucking spaceship, and now they're saying aliens exist, and we're like, we knew it. We, we saw knew. the spaceship. We knew. I've always Relax. believed in aliens. Oh yeah, dude, I had a real like truly experience with them. Every like, time a real she one. does the sound bowls, that's the only thing I picture. Interesting. It's like so getting you're connected. lifted up. Oh, sorry. At, yeah. Like literally getting lifted up by UFOs. That's the only thing. That vibration, something about it in my body like feels like it remembers it. Like <gasps> I can't explain it. And every time, do I not? I'm like, I feel like I'm getting pulled up by a UFO. A I lot of that. people tell me they have like galactic like 
extraterrestrial yeah. every out of single this world time it's wild in that like i never that. see them or what they look like like i could i don't picture that it's always like i picture this like orb and i'm like being lifted up into a fucking like literally i'm like just being alien lifted. abduction yeah beam alien. me up beam like, me up crazy. light being yeah, beam me up scotty please me up. take me from this fucking <laughs> it's so wild but truly I, I feel like when things like that happen right like these little like reminders i feel like that's like our I don't know if you believe in this, but like it's almost like your future self leaving little hints along the way. Mm. That's like you're meant to be here. Like oh, little hundred percent. Like synchronicity. I like also you're... feel like it means that you're connected to them. Yes. Like you're probably connected to yes. them. You're from there probably for sure. Exactly. Yeah. It's like just little like drops of like you're meant to be here. This is where you're meant to be right yeah, here. You got to have the Native American energy, the galactic yes. energy, the all angels, of all of it, just to all come in it. and help lift and do your part. Hundred percent. Yeah. And when you call them in, all the ancestors, all the guides yeah. and meditations, every single day, yeah. every single morning yeah. when I wake up, I call in all yeah. my ancestors, yep. all my guides, yeah. all the elements. They're like always we listening. are earth, so fire, connected. water, like all of it. Yeah. It's, I love that. And when you do that, you will get the fucking signs. Like oh, if you're calling it yeah. in, and they'll be so fucking clear. Mm hmm. Like you'll yeah. be like lap you cross the face clear. You'll be like that kid, there there's no Truly. way it's a coincidence. There's no fuck like you there's can't even no way. wrap no. your head around it being a coincidence. No, no, definitely not. Like us together two years ago today. Like yeah, time how many spiral. times were you supposed to fucking be on this I podcast? Know, like I know. Three. I know. Three. And like know. things didn't happen and no. it just No. That's an, that's just another coincidence. No, I love that shit so much. That's <laughs> why too. I'm like, damn. Me I saw too. that, I was like, there's a reason. Yeah. There's yeah. a reason. And we both bought Megalodon fossils for our kids. Yeah. I love that. We went that. and saw that crystal store. Yeah, like, that was sick. The crystal store out there. was That whole trip was so fucking life-changing for I me. I love Colorado. Yeah. Colorado has the best food, too. I, I enjoyed the takeout there the best. Well, the nourished retreats in Sydney and George. and, and how. So tell us a little bit of that because that's really yeah, important. Oh, yeah. I love – Yeah, nourish. so like, how did how that long? start? Okay, so basically our mutual friend Pete and Bethany were getting married and George was good friends with Pete from childhood. And And you were already a yoga teacher, right? Like I was already doing that. a little bit of yoga. Yeah, I did my training in 2011 and 12 and so I was teaching here and there in London Dairy and um yeah, and I was into spirituality big time. Like I was always a seeker as soon yeah, as I yeah. got sober like I had my energy healers like I just did at all the different things I possibly could and tried to learn as much. And so I think we like saw each other on Instagram and knew that like we were into the same stuff. And, um, but it was after Pete had mentioned that to me and then he sat us at the same table for his wedding. And so it was like George and Sid and me and my husband and my kids. And it was just like instant connection. And you know, George, he's just like, yep. Hey, so you want to do a workshop with me? Yeah. <laughs> I can love George and, and all of you guys. Yeah, so, so direct. That's what that's what's how it's supposed to be. I yeah, like. and so he um, was doing meditation, and so our first workshop we did was called Manifesting Miracles, and we did it in my backyard in Manchester, and we you know forced all of our friends to come, <laughs> and we fed them like soup from Whole Foods, and <laughs> I don't know, it was it was awesome, but like that was the beginning. That was like 2016. And then him and Sid were like, okay, we want to start Nourish, which it has the philosophy of like basically, you know, if you're not taking time to nourish yourself, how can you nourish others? And most importantly, how can you show up like your most authentic version, yeah, of, version yourself, of yourself, your best version of yourself? And so we started doing like pop-up events like here and there randomly and then it wasn't until like the end of 2019 where we were like, okay, let's get serious we want to plan like retreats, destination retreats. And so we planned one in the middle of a pandemic. So it was 2020, which was like a huge risk because, you know. Yeah, who knows what could have happened. Who's going to sign up and go. But we, we got we got a ton of signups and we went to Montana. We went to Yellowstone. Like we always. Incredible. Yeah. So like the thing is, is like Sid picks like the destinations and we always try to design them near national parks. So we take people's on these retreats. Okay. We nourish the shit out of them. Unreal. So that like you can just rest and then we give you all the tools. We teach you how to meditate so that you can go home and become self-sufficient meditators. We do the breath work stuff to release all the trauma yep. and stress. We do um, Vedic practices, which is also similar to, 
you know, these other practices of, again, just like launching out more stress and de-exciting your nervous system and then nourishing you with food. So Sid cooks all the meals. You know how good they are. Oh, my God. And they're vegan. And, like, there's something so special about that, too, like be, like being vegan for the week. And, like, you don't actually know that you're eating vegan because – yeah, you don't. She, you have actually no idea. She's an unreal chef. But it, like, helps you really reset your nervous system because your body's not using all that extra yeah. energy to, like, break down the meat or yeah. break down the processed foods. Yeah. And then you go on the hikes. And yeah, so we do two. We try to do two hikes to, de- you know, depending on where it is. Like, when you came, we went to the Rocky Mountains. And then there was a oh, fucking yeah. moose. Did you see that moose? Yeah, the moose was fucking huge. You shared that the other day. It was yeah, like the so first was the day week. we got there. Yeah. yeah. So we've just like, we immerse ourselves in these magical places. We feed you nourishing food. We teach you how to meditate. We do yoga every day. We do all the stress stuff so that you get to have an absolute reset. Mm. You're so calm and rested and nurtured from the inside out. And then, like, hopefully our hope is always that, like, people go home and implement these tools in their lives because stress isn't taking any days off. And, like, we have so much information coming at us at all times, which is hard on our nervous systems and then, you know, life in general. Like, moms, like, we have a lot on our plate. And, you know, if we're doing the work – yeah, so it's just such an honor to do that. And, yeah, we've just, like, really grown and gotten serious about it. And now, like, this past – I would say the past two years, we are, like, really focusing on doing – we do, retreats. like, four retreats a year, two in New Hampshire, and then two destination. And then next year, we're going to Italy. I know. So, so that's going to be our first, like, Epic. out of the States. Epic. Yeah, that's happening in May. And then, and then you have, like, day retreats, too, and, like, mm-hmm. the pop-up events you do here. Yeah. That I've had a few times. Yes. Yeah, so, like, so. you can get, like, baby experiences. Exactly. Which is on all of it. All of it is amazing. If you can't travel, you guys give opportunity we to do. have the, the full day, like, retreats. Like, I love those because yeah. I've been mm. at the property up there. Yeah, it's great. And we're actually, we're expanding. So, like, we're building this incredible barn. Well, I don't Did you see the barn there? The, yeah, it they're redoing the whole thing and yeah. so we're going to use that as like our home base incredible and so we have we're going to have like a nice this? Yoga. this is in north sutton which is like oh, it's south of lake it's Sunapee. 10 minutes from the lake okay like the yeah lake. i know lake Sunapee. yeah it's, yeah yeah and so strangely enough um so they were in rhode island and they decided to move to new hampshire I went down to Rhode Island to see them. You did? I did. I went down there and I went to George's Jungle and we had the we had lunch at the um, it was right because right after Colorado is when they got, found the house and we went down there and yeah. they were like we have some good news we're buying a house in New Hampshire. Yes. So, so it was yes. like literally right after Colorado. It was. And then I went down there like a month later to have another meeting with them mm-hmm. just to like see them and mm-hmm. like stay connected. They brought mm-hmm. me to that really amazing place the mm-hmm. the bakery oh. and the yes the vegan wildflower. Place. Oh my god! Yeah, it's bomb. and then we had lunch at, and we had the best uh, bar buffalo cauliflower. Oh yes, oh, this place. it's like yes. a, it's like a bakery and yep. a restaurant right next to it's each other. The best buffalo cauliflower ever. ever, and they do the best vegan Caesar salads. It's like crap. I've cocaine. thought about going vegan, but I just don't know if I could give up steak. Yeah. Well, you know, I've thought about it so much. Yeah. Well, because they say like it's it brings you to higher consciousness. But yeah. I've read so many studies on it. I've thought I've literally like. I'm just like I don't know if I could do it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not there yet, right? Yeah. Like I'm not there. Part well, of my journey. Sydney helped me heal my gut, and she mm-hmm. like helped me and cooked vegan for me, and I completely like reset my gut. I, I mean, yeah, I, incredible. I work like I. I tried it for a little while. It's amazing, definitely, but like. Everybody's body is different mm-hmm. too, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and I notice a difference when you can just eat like happy meat and like farm fed yeah. and like mm-hmm. getting it sourced and things like that. But yeah, yeah, I think it makes a difference for sure. And that's like another thing that's like she's a big proponent of like, you know, what you put in affects yeah. all five of your senses. And, mm-hmm. you know, so she tries to locally source all of the meals. Like even when we're traveling, she really does. And, yeah, I mean, it's just a week, and so I do. There's a, people who, like, freak out. They're like, what are we going to eat, carrots all day or something? And, like, no. some people brought snacks on the retreat because they were worried they were going to be hungry. And I you- did that. I brought beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> you won. Jerky queen. 
jerky I will can say over I here. didn't eat it, okay? I really like succumbed, but the I... truth comes out. Say it if you're listening. No, I told you guys I had the beef jerky, I swear. <laughs> I didn't eat it, but I really brought it because I was like, I'm not fucking doing this shit. It's a real fear and concern, so but you but don't I was go hungry. Fully fed. She is like she's Italian, so it's like yeah. she's gonna overfeed you, yeah. and she also does desserts every day, Ugh. which is just oh. so nice, you know. So it just good. Is. I feel like you can. There's catch so much up. love in it. There is, and that's like her whole thing. If and you can eat anything, but if it's made with like love, then yes. it's gonna so resonate good. in your body. Too. Well, I say that about like you know sometimes Kelsey will make me a grilled cheese, and mm-hmm. like it's. Like Aww. it's a grilled cheese, right? But yeah. it's like it's so Made with good love. It's because the energy. like she's a teenager and she's like, "Do you want a grilled cheese?" I'm like, "Yeah." So <laughs> Same thing sweet. with like a peanut butter and jelly. You know mm, what I, I mean? Love like peanut butter when and somebody jelly. else makes you a peanut butter and jelly, it's <laughs> like so yeah. Like my husband, good. <laughs> he never makes me food, but like the select times he does, I'm like, "Wow, babe, I love you so much. This is so thoughtful." Like it's really so simple. I know, I know but it's yeah. the love and care, and yeah, like, yeah. So that's. Well, we do, but I love that so much. Yeah, so it's been a journey, but I do feel and like how big can... are your retreats? Like, how many people usually? Well, I think so. Our biggest one, we rented two big houses and we had 22. I don't know if we'll actually do that again, but so that was like our max. But this year, we were only oh, actually, no, Italy's gonna be big, it can ha- have 22 people. We're having two villas, yes, I saw one so beautiful. Yoga oh my suit. god, yeah, and so, um, they each have their own heated and ground pool outside overlooking the ocean, yeah. so that's gonna be big. So it's just it depends, but like the yeah. retreat coming up, usually like mm, 12 to 15 people ish. Um, yeah, I like that though. Keep it small and intimate, yeah, it is, it is, and you're like doing a lot, you're like not doing a lot. Because you, you don't actually do a lot. I remember that was the hardest thing for me because you actually really rest. Well, yeah. And you get a lot of rest and you're doing a lot of meditations, but you're purging. Yeah, you're purging stress. A lot. Well, and that's the thing. And that's why we like joke around with people. Like this isn't like your typical yoga retreat where you're going to like do a yoga class in the morning and then, you know. Okay. Hey. Okay. What? Is that the parking lot party? Parking I, I miss always. living here. <laughs> <laughs> we always got the parking I lot parties the woods hopping out here. A tree farm. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna tell you guys. Yeah, yeah. So epic. We- George and Sid bought a house on this. It's called Shadow Hill, and we did an event there. And we're just driving on the street, and I saw Christmas trees, and they're little tiny Christmas trees, and I was like, oh, those are cute. Wouldn't it be fun to own a Christmas tree farm? And it was like just the thought, you know. But then it was like started like. And like we were saying earlier, where you're getting yeah, these like listen hits, to but your thoughts. you're getting these hits and you're like, no, nah, that's fucking crazy. But you keep getting it. And I remember like I do a, like drawing with my kids and I drew the Christmas tree farm in the house and was oh like, God. yeah. And then it was just like we we also do in the retreats, we do manifestation manifestation practices. And so George and Sid, like we all held that vision for me too, which is so great to have friends that are like yeah, supporting you. Yeah, hold that you. vision 100%. Not even a year later after they moved in, we got that place. Unreal. So we moved, me and my husband, after living in Manchester for like 10 years with the kids, we just uprooted everything. He moved his business and it was a big fucking deal. And it was just like, yeah, it was just one of those. That's incredible. So how far is that from Manchester? It's like 40-ish, 45 minutes. So you're like in the woods. I love that. We're in the woods. I, we got we, 55 acres. I believe that shit for real. We totally manifested my house. I had like a whole picture drawn of like what I wanted and envisioned mm-hmm. and like the property and the land. And then when it happened, like came down to it, I, for some reason I was like, no, this can't be it. This can't be it. You know, just because the inside was just so dated. And I yeah. was like, this isn't it. This isn't it. You know, like had my mind so set on like the cosmetic shit that I wasn't actually seeing, like from the outside looking in, I was like, this is exactly what I ha- had pictured Mm. but I just like couldn't see it until the day of and then we got there and I just like sobbed pulling down my driveway because I was just like this is it I wanted like a Hallmark movie town house like I wanted the cracked driveway all of it like the trees just like it's literally like in my mind when I close my eyes it's like what I pictured and envisioned it's wild yeah you can't make that stuff up no you can't that's why then then it's like life is like a game and it gets fun and it's like okay what life am I going to create game. today? What's new? Yeah. And it's just we so. We say it all the time. Life is a fucking game. And when you yeah. get the cheat codes and you fucking cheat figure codes. it out. These cheat are codes, the cheat baby. Codes. We have the fucking cheat codes. We got the cheat codes. And I, I will tell you. We I bought my Christmas tree from Jillian. <laughs> you did. I came up with the kids. We you cut did. down our Christmas tree. They had like wreath. 
I love we had that. like cider. Sydney made all kinds of snacks. You made like it was like we a made whole our own event, wreaths. and we made wreaths. Your oh kids my God, made wreaths. Yeah, you yeah. gotta come. I'll and take you, and we get our Christmas tree there. Well, so yeah. cute. Let's and go. Exactly, and that was like the hallmark dream I had. Like, just I want. I love doing stuff for the community that brings me, too. me I joy. Love community and Christmas is just such a special the best. time. Yeah. And it's like, I don't really, honestly, like the actual day of Christmas, I fucking hate. Same. Honestly, like I hate it all. But I love the traditions. See, I love the Christmas. Leading it's my favorite. My I, birthday's a week before. It's like always my favorite time. When is your birthday? The 16th. So you're Sagittarius. Yes. Yes, she is. I am very sad. Five planets in Sagittarius. You do? Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm a double Sag Gemini. Oh, that's yeah. fun. That's yeah. fun. Cool. I'm very Sag. Yeah. Let's but go. yeah, I like Thanksgiving. It's my favorite holiday. Food and no <laughs> gifts. Food and no gifts. I just hate the gifts. I agree. And gratitude. No. Yeah, and gratitude has just become, Christmas has just become so much about, you know. Well, we've consumerism. made it a point to, like, we've made it a point to be like, no. We do, so there's like two things I ask my son what he really, really wants because he's at that age now. But for my daughter, she's still little and she doesn't really know how many presents she's opening. So we just got her like a cup, couple Barbie dolls last year. Yeah. But I'm all about the experiences. Mm, like yes. we're going to save for vacations. Mm. Like I'm not doing all the toys and shit that go in buckets like mm-hmm. that we get at the fucking five below every other day. Like, yeah, that not they doing break it. in two seconds Yeah, anyways. I'm not doing it. I'm not so doing fun. it. Like not doing it. My son knows. He can't. He's like at the age now where he's like. You know, he saw that I just went on an airplane. He's like, Mom, I want to go on a plane. I'm like, all right, that's what we're doing for Christmas then. Mm. Like, you're going to pick a place and we'll go, you know. Yeah, I love so. that. I love that. That's what I want to do, Experience over presence for sure. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you live? So we live in Chester. Oh, okay. So that's yeah. like near Aub- near Sandown. Auburn. Yeah. Oh. It's like Sandown, Chester, Auburn, Raymond, yeah. Manchester. I keep telling Dylan, I sent him, I actually sent him a picture the other day. I just want a tiny house in their backyard. <laughs> <laughs> we have really? land for well, it. Well, we're building a geodome back there and you I can know. come stay there. So perfect. Have yeah. your own little private. Well, I'm, I'm going to have my own. It's going to happen. And it really is like Hallmark vibes. Like the town does such cute shit for the kids. It like is so Santa cute. drives by our house. Aww. Like it's just the cutest shit. Like truly Hallmark movie vibes. Like my whole like dream come true. Like Aww. swear to God. It's the best. Dude. And we could be all like using drugs or dead right <laughs> no. now. And like you're creating your absolute best truly. life. Truly. And- I mean, that's amazing. It's incredible. It's insane. I like sometimes even like you said, like, you know, I've had a lot of dark nights of the soul. Even this year has literally probably been. I don't want to say I could probably say equally as hard as it was when I was out using Hmm. Mm. like the amount of pain. Yeah. Emotion wise, like emotional pain that I've had to like go through this year, like eight months from all directions too. Yeah. It's been eight months. Yeah. A lot. All fucking directions. Right. All fucking directions. Yeah. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. Friends that I thought were going to be in my life Mm -hmm. forever. Fucking marriage, nine year marriage. Fucking this other thing that I have going on. Mm -hmm. That's fucking evil. Like, Mm -hmm. like so much loss, so much Mm -hmm. fucking just betrayal. But yeah, and just being like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fucking try it anyway. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I'm going to be real with you. You are the most expanded than you've ever felt to yeah. me. Like, I've always loved you and thought you're awesome, but your energy Truly. is lifted. I've like, you feel too. so light to me. I know. So it's like, keep and I've going, witnessed honey. it. Yeah. Like the person who's sitting here, I say it all the time, is so different from the person I saw so six different. months ago. Like it's it's honestly wild mm-hmm. to me. Yeah. Like your energy, your aura, just all of it. Mm-hmm. Like you're finally standing in your purpose and in your power. And mm-hmm. it's like a beautiful thing to see because mm-hmm. you're no longer like trying to be something you're not or living this like unauthentic life. Like it's it's incredible. Yeah, you got every you got rid of everything that was weighing you down. Exactly. Yeah. And sometimes it sucks when it's getting taken away because you're like, it's your whole fucking world. Yeah. yeah. But Identity, yeah. all of it. Everything. Yeah. yeah. But girl, you you're doing great. So yeah, it's things, exciting. Baby. Big things, <laughs> baby. It's fucking really exciting. But it's like sometimes I'm like, that's sometimes it's like how? Like, even, like, talking to you outside about everything that, like, you know, sometimes I just, like, go about my day and I'm like, oh, yeah, like, this happened. And I'm like, oh, that sucks that that happened. But when I, like, collectively sit down and talk to anybody about what's happened to me all together in the past eight months. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a fucking lot. Yeah. You can't deny it. Like, you know what? (laughs) 
It's a lot. You got Let me just open a business in the middle, meantime and like do all these other things. No worries. Like, it's fine. I'll just <laughs> everything. make everything. But like the business is doing the best it's yeah. ever done. Like this yeah. space. It I, is the space. Because you was... did something healthy, Aim. You channeled all that dark energy into something so beautiful, right? You did. And I was telling Amy earlier that she had sacred space in the other building. And it was great. And yes. we have so many great memories there. Yeah. But there's something special yes. about Everyone this says place. it. We all say it. Like when, when and she got this place... You came in and it was just like, this is it. Yeah, and you can feel that your heart and soul is present in yes. this one. Yeah. And it's like fully Way there. More. There Way is like more. intention. Way you know? more. I agree 100%. And that's why it's flowing. Anything that you put your mind to and energy to magnifies and you know that. And it so flows. it's like God was like, oh, <laughs> get rid of everybody. <laughs> everyone. Because we need you on the front lines. <laughs> Literally everyone. I think Isn't it was necessary though, because there's like because again a few we don't people. do surface level. All that shit was so <laughs> surface level. Yeah. So it's like it had to be. It like had I to feel be. like Tay is like and like obviously you, but like somebody that was like in really like involved yeah. in my other yeah, life. Knew. This is like a new life. This is a whole new like new version. I've literally yeah. like regenerated every cell. Yeah. Like it really feels like yeah. that full for body me, reset, like, full, full human body reset. Like, yeah, full human reset. Full human. I feel reset. it honestly. I really do. So I do too. That's you got to be thank you thank then you're thankful for the oh. pain. You're thankful for the darkness. Yes. I literally posted on my way because I had the meeting with Katie today. Like before this, before the podcast, I hired Katie as my business coach. Yeah, which she's awesome and un so fucking, real. fucking funny. Oh Katie my god! Literally, like we when I need like a pick me up, I literally rewatch our episode. I'm not even joking. Aww. And I like skip to the part where she's like, "I'm the piss and the urine." <laughs> she's like, "I'm dead." <laughs> she's so and, no one like, like yeah. her. No, no one. Yeah. Funny. Yeah. So and funny. Three hours I sat with her today for three hours, and she just like empowered me and like built me up and like and was just like yeah like girl like you're fucking doing, doing it. it and I literally it as she was telling me and as I was planning all the things I literally was driving here I told Taylor I was gonna hump her <laughs> and then you said jump and I thought it was supposed to be reverse like I'm gonna jump you when you get here no hump you when you get here I'm like oh okay no, I, that did, works. I did that I hump her as soon as she got here because I'm just so excited <laughs> I but, did see it. I witnessed it. It happened. <laughs> there was a lot of humping. Um, <laughs> um, it all makes sense. It, it all does. makes sense. Like, because there was a lot of times in these past eight months where I was like, make it make sense because it really doesn't, didn't make sense that mm. I was going through the amount of pain, having the things, not seeing Gavin since yeah. February. Like, literally just so much shit that I'm going through like mm -hmm. none of it for who I am and what I've done in so many different communities mm. and not out of ego right like right. I know what the fuck I've done and mm. like rise above yeah. process mm -hmm. AA mm -hmm. like all the mm -hmm. people like all the things that I've just worked so hard to just literally be like you're not alone. Here's my hand. Mm. I want to help you. Yes. Like, you're not above me. Like, I'm walking the same road with you. Like, here mm -hmm. we are. Mm -hmm. Like, let's fucking go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's always who I've been. Always. I always knew that, but I feel like so many people just, like, misunderstood you. Yeah. Like, that's just truly how I felt. That's how I viewed it. That's how I saw it. That's how, like, I felt people that, you know what I mean? Like, you've just always been so misunderstood. And, like, this big, like, Oh, scary persona, you know. Yeah, like I think I think people are intimidated by exactly. you, and that's what I'm it is. I'm not intimidating. But you got a heart. You got a big heart, and one. You remind me of one of my favorite quotes. And my favorite type of people are the ones who've been through hell and come back out with buckets of water to help other people and go yes. back into the fire and help others. You know what I'm saying? And that's what you've always done. Yeah, those are my favorite kind of people. Yeah, and I posted it on my facebook on my way here i said it finally all makes sense yeah it does like it, it really does. all the pain mm. and like i felt that collectively over the past few months where i'm just like okay like i can see it i can see it i can see it but like sitting there and like breaking everything down like talking to katie like having her like yeah you know like say everything like what's the trajectory of like what's gonna happen with like everything that i've built by myself you know what yeah. i mean like i've done this like yeah i had people to help me but like 
no, this, this is you. space is it was all her. Me. Yeah. People want to take credit for it, and mm-hmm. they'll be like, "Yeah, I did that for you." I'm like, <laughs> "You can feel, if you want to feel that way, you can totally feel that way." <laughs> I know what the fuck I did. I know yeah. what sleepless nights I had. I fucking know like all the fucking shit that I've done to get this space the way yeah. that this space is, and it, yeah. it was me. You can't take that away from me. Yeah, no, no one's taking that away. No, it's felt away. here. It's definitely felt. It it's is different felt. energy. It's, it's epic beautiful. and a leveled up version of you and and i have all these amazing facilitators like it's not just mine like mm. i have you know i have you guys in here doing mm-hmm. events i have other people that are doing breath work and doing sound healings because it's community it's, there community. is i'm having exactly. people do the same exact thing that i'm doing here mm-hmm. and that's how katie is too because listen katie's doing the same exact thing that i'm doing she's like everything i want to be she's already done like had the book and the mm-hmm. show and the the app she's got mm-hmm. the same she's a sound healer mm-hmm. but she's like this is abundance we're creating i want to create a hundred people like me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. those are my favorite kind of people Preach. that it's like they're not gatekeeping she's a massive expander for you right yeah. you want, but she's loving and it's like let's go like that's yeah. those are the those are the type of the people same. that i love around and like around. having you here like breath work we're doing like we're doing the breath work practice it's yeah. like i had this other woman iris she's i'm in here like it's like we're a community mm-hmm. all doing the same thing but everyone is different and every mm-hmm. teacher is different yeah, like, yeah. Have her unique ways yeah like i don't think i could go into a, a the valley street and do it like you could do it do you know what i mean exactly yeah. it's like you there's always a teacher for a student and mm-hmm. like you just have to find your teacher like not everyone is going to resonate with you yeah and that's okay like yeah like i cuss yeah. amy cusses that's why we found the course that we did because it's like <laughs> okay fuck yeah like yeah, let's go yeah. i'm in here My being like part. fucking buckle up like <laughs> life fucking sucks it sucks for everyone that's what i'm in there mm. when they're, i'm doing breath work i'm like yeah fucking life sucks like you've had fucking trauma like mm. so have as every other person like we all talk about ancestral yeah. trauma but we all have our ancestral warrior fucking spirit mm. so tap in why are we talking Double about up. the trauma fucking tap into your warrior mm. fucking breathe deeper mm-hmm. the bigger the breath the bigger the release <laughs> fucking breathe like all i'm literally in. like yelling it's awesome <laughs> like a drill sergeant it's awesome i get like epic. possessed but it's right crazy no though, but right like but some I people might it. not love that right like yeah. some people might not love that like energy yeah that like loud like i like it yeah yeah, yeah I it's love like that. tribal music yeah, i love yeah. that fucking yeah. Yeah. yeah but some people need a softer touch and yeah. like a gentler hand and so yeah. it's like okay you find your teacher yeah you know the more people doing this work the more people that are going to be healed the more people that are going to listen to their intuition and do exactly. what they came here to do right exactly which make this world a better peaceful place all safer. around safer happier happier healthier all of it yeah katie said we're something, waking up katie said something today about um like everybody has like a trauma right and everybody has this gift and we all have a story mm. and you're literally she said something like you're wiping like your ass with god's gifts when you like aren't sharing your trauma because mm. it's like mm. it was given to you like your trauma was actually given, given to, to you, you for, for you to fucking level up hell yeah to use that lesson for you to like be the greater self to yeah. share that so people aren't alone like i love that it is a gift I, and that's how i look at everything now it's like as mm. shitty as sh- these dark nights of the soul may fucking be mm-hmm. and as much as i have all this pain and all this shit that i can like look at and like s- play the drop the fucking victim card and all this shit it was a gift mm-hmm. because Such i would have not had this kind of fucking freedom absolutely it was the key the key to your freedom yeah <sighs> and you can't see it when you're in it no no so. it's hard it's fucking hard as hell <laughs> It's hard as hell. Sometimes it took me years. Yeah. But I will say that the breath work really launches it out quicker than anything. Yes. That I've done. That's why I fell in love. Yeah. First session, I was like, this is it. Yeah. I, like, I've done years of therapy, like, you Same. know, years of EMDR now. Like, Same. nothing has ever been so instant and, and fast acting for me as breath work. Yeah. Like Isn't that so instant crazy? relief. Yeah. But it's, but honestly, I think why is because it shows you how powerful you are. Yeah. Like it brings it all in. You're doing it. You're breathing. Yeah. You're creating the release. Mm. You're creating the shit. Like mm-hmm. you're pushing yourself past yeah, the limits because it's the fucking life force. hard. It's yeah. hard to get there. It, it is like hard. That, the ego, the mind, yeah, like those first 10 minutes. Like, oh, yeah. You, if you push it's, yourself past that, like yes. getting there, once like you get to 
into that zone, then you're yeah. like, okay, let's fucking go. Let's go. And it you is. see that your body yeah, you takes get to you your flow over. Yeah. Sometimes, like, because I obviously have to do it alone, like, through Zoom, and I keep telling Taylor, I'm like, I fucking need you, bitch. Like, I need you to get through it so that I way know. you can do it for me. But, I mean, I'll be here, and I'm, like, rolling, and I'm, like, like just trying to stay in it because my, bo- my mind is like, no, like, don't do it. Don't go there. It's scary. Like, and I have to be like, I'm doing this for my greater good. I'm doing it for my healing. Like, holding on <laughs> yeah. to my rocks. I'm like, keep fucking breathing, Amy. Don't fucking tap out. <laughs> like, I'm, like, trying to coach myself to get there. No, because for I real. Know. Especially yeah. when you're doing it alone. I feel like in a group setting, you have more of, like, outside influence to help you keep going. Yeah, like, you can feed off of it. But when you're more. alone, it's like, it's fucking hard. Mm-hmm. And some of the journeys that we have to do for class, I'm just like, yeah, it's like that 10 minute mark where I like want to give up. But I'm like, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Like it's 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 a mental fucking mind game, like for mm-hmm. sure. And then the second you don't give up and I your know. body takes over and you get yeah. that Magic. altered state of conscious, you're like, <gasps> Magic I'm a fucking superhero. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, your hands fucking light up. You're like, wait, can I shoot electricity out of my goddamn hands right now? <laughs> But seriously. Right? It's amazing. But seriously. Yeah. And the screaming. I love the screaming's my favorite. Yeah. It's my favorite. So much suppressed rage was so inside much. of me. And I feel like that's like the breath work helped me find my voice. And like you were saying how it empowers yes. you. Yeah. I feel so empowered. Same. Mm-hmm. And there was nobody that could give that to me. Same. So yeah, there is it's fucking magical guys it is it is <laughs> again label us crazy i know but look at us thriving <laughs> yeah <laughs> these are real fucking smiles like we're these not are fucked real up right laughs. now this yeah. is, no. we're Epic. so we're like epic shit epic yeah. shit like living our dream our yeah. best lives living our best lives living yeah. in our highest timeline that's what i say every day when i wake Aww. up i'm living in my highest timeline I'm living in my highest timeline. living in my highest timeline your yeah. highest timeline yet Exactly. Uh, As of like every morning I wake up, I'm like, I'm living in my highest timeline. That's awesome. I love that. And I'm like I said, you know, for full circle, like I'm so grateful for like you like giving me this practice and like I was like I was coming every like pop up thing. I started having them at the studio so I could come come. and like Mm -hmm. and then, you know, I just was going through everything and then it it like happened right before I like found it was like right it was February so I divorced in November and then February I went on the retreat with her and like I got this ads about breath masters I did the free course and he was fucking swearing in it and I'm like this is my guy this is it this is my (laughs) teacher like this is the fucking shit I need to be teaching yeah and I was like holy shit yes I love it well I did it with Megan because Megan's was similar to kind of it was hypno breath work where she was like talking but she was very so that probably sparked something in you too because yeah yeah because it was the same as just like the same three part breath like all of that and then and then and um and then it was like literally with all within a fucking week i know this is god shots i know (sighs) so nice so So nice it's epic it's just and like you know so we're actually yeah nourish is actually we're hosting our first breathwork training ever like we've never done -uh. trainings yeah, so we're going to host our first training. But it's, like, not just breath work. We're giving everybody everything that we use to stay in alignment. Oh, my God. I yeah. love that. Yeah, so that's going to be January 2024 at the retreat so home. I love Yeah, talk about what you guys got going on in Nourish, too, right now. Anything. Like, we'll link Nourish. Yeah. And, like, we'll link all the stuff, like, with the podcast. Like, yeah. So we're doing the breath work training or facilitator, but we're calling it, like, the Nourish. No, it is breath work facilitator training. But, um. Yeah, you're going to get the meditation training in it, and then you're going to get all of our, like, private practices explain that we do. Explain your meditation. Can you explain your the meditation to us? Like, yeah, so the, the type of meditation it is? Yep, so George is a master meditation teacher. Yep. He would be able to explain it way better, but it's essentially Vedic meditation, and it's for what he would call a householder. So like, you know, when you think of meditation and you like look up a person meditating, you have this idea that it's like someone in the lotus position with their hands like this, overlooking an ocean or a mountain or something like that. That's just like a false idea of what meditation meditation is. is. And so he like debunks 
everything that people think meditation is yeah, literally right. and he makes it so easy for what he calls householders versus a monk a monk is somebody who's doing maybe something like that i don't know um you know it's for everybody who has busy lives it's a 20 minute practice or technically 22 minute practice twice a day and he gives you your own mantra that he is trained to give you based on where you are in your life right now Mm. and then it's a four day training it's like an eight hour total and yeah he makes it enjoyable and easy and you don't need any app you don't need anything you just need this attitude basically yeah of how to do it and honestly I love it I meditate twice a day and like it's like I feel like when I meditate I'm just like plugging into higher states of consciousness I'm plugging into God I'm it's fueling me up with more yeah. patience, more self-love. It's just something that, you know, I think we all need um, to do, you know. And, and the best part is, Mom, when I figured this meditation out is – and I I talk about – I feel like every – almost every podcast I mention something about George or Aww. Nourished or like, right? Like I'm always like talking about the meditation. So you could be sitting there for 20 minutes. You start saying your mantra and like if the kids, kids are there and they're like, oh, Mom, I need my butt wiped – you can get up and go wipe their butt and then like you're set your timer for 20 minutes and like you go do what you need to do and you just come back down and sit down and yeah, like you don't finish. have to start over you don't have to start over you just like re-say the mantra like re-ground in your meditation and you're still getting your 20 minutes a day I yeah love that. Two times a yeah day. and it's like a whole it's like an attitude yeah there's like an attitude and perspective to have about it which is also translates into life about just being like accepting of all your experiences and just like being okay with like not things like being perfect or always blissful you yeah. know and not having racing thoughts while you're in it yeah it's actually like he really talks about like having a lot of thoughts and meditation is a good sign it means a part of the stress release mechanics and he gets into like the science of it which mm-hmm. is really cool um but yeah he's an incredible teacher he does like private like meditation trainings if anyone wanted to learn but when you come on our retreats that's what we do we give you that training and then we meditate a fuck ton and we do breath work and rounding and, you know, all that stuff. So you're just, like, catching up And rounding catching is up really on- cool because it's, like, pressure points really. So you really, like, give yes. yourself, like, a pretty much, like, full body, like, it's nervous self-care and, like, yeah. lymph. What's it called? It's rounding. called rounding, which is another Vedic practice. Rounding or rounding? Rounding. Rounding. R. Yeah. And so it's just another easy, gentle, and movements like Amy was doing like that. And it's just all just to really, like, calm love your yourself. nervous system. Wow. Yeah. And I love Self-love. That. And you, like, go down your leg and you go yeah, down your Yeah, you do arm. your face. That's and then so you do cool. what pranayama practices, the nostril ones, and we meditate. And, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's what we do. We I have, a, we have a, a va- we have our first advance retreat coming up in October. Or I'm sorry, September. We're going to Oregon. We're going to Crater Lake and the Red Redwoods National Park. So cool. So those are for people who have learned the meditation practice because we're going to go deeper. We're going to do more breathwork sessions. We're going to do m- more techniques. And yeah, that'll be our first one. So that's coming up. And then we have a New Hampshire retreat, which is going to be awesome in October. And then Italy, May 2024. I love that. Yeah, so we're excited. We're excited to bring more to the community and, you know. You have an event coming up at Humble. Oh, yeah, it's Thursday. We have a breath break. Yep. And then we have a pop-up event this weekend, which is like just a three-hour event. And it's not – it's going to be yoga, meditation, and then a three-course fancy meal made with love by Sid. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so it's kind of like a nice way for people where they say they don't want to commit to a retreat – they come to one of those and they get a feel for us and see if they like it. And usually they do. Sid pretty much sells it. We call yeah. her the reason. <laughs> yeah. I love that. It's unreal. The food's unreal. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's, I feel Everything's so blessed. unreal. It's like collectively together. And then you lost your brother and you have a nonprofit also. Yeah. So my brother tragically overdosed in um, Mexico, Cabo. In like the end of 2018 or 19. God, I feel like I don't remember. Yeah, that was horrible. And so sad. Yeah, he was such a light. And uh, he was sober for a little while out in Cali. And he was like, that light turned on. You would have loved him. You always say that. Fucking wild. And he (laughs) called himself the hybrid. 
because he he believed he was part human, part galactic. Yep. And he would always have galactic experiences and videotape them. And he has like such a he had a, such a mass accent, like more than me. It was weird, <laughs> <laughs> like a Boston Italian yeah. accent. I don't know, but um, he was just so incredible. And so I'm so grateful we got to have that time with him. We went out to Cali. We had Thanksgiving together, and that was like our last Thanksgiving with him. And his birthday was like a week later, and he died like five days after his birthday and uh that was fucking horrible Ugh. and you know man it really does put life in perspective when that stuff happens because when they're so young he just turned 30 and you just never think it's gonna happen and then it does and man he died and that was a a really tough time but we had already scheduled a um a vacation a family vacation to puerto rico and it was like right before COVID shut everything down. And that's where I found breath work. And it was like, I planned that. Thank God he died. And it was just like this perfect storm of like fucked upness and darkness. And then I went to Puerto Rico and I had that breath work experience. At the same time, George was having a breath, the same breath work experience in New York with his teacher. And Jordan came to George in breath work and was like, Jill's got to teach this. You got to help tell her she's got to teach this and in my session I had that thought I'm like I want to learn how to teach this but my fucking mind like we mm. were saying earlier was like no you've done so many fucking trainings yeah you've done all the things like this is just going to be one other thing that you actually don't that's do. literally how I felt I was like I've done so many things and changed up my career path there are all these things so many times people are going to just like laugh at me at this point yeah then I was like I don't even fucking care no like I don't care like the the massive impact it had on me I was like I don't give a fuck at this point like oh yeah this is definitely one of the most powerful practices you can share with anybody yeah. absolutely yeah. so it was like that's how we did it and you know when he died my mom had donations sent to George instead because instead of flowers because George was a recovering heroin addict and my brother was a heroin addict and she knew George was helping people at that time. And so in that moment, like that day, George was like, I don't care if I receive a dollar or a hundred dollars. I'm going to start a nonprofit in your brother's name so we can teach them these practices. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we got it started. It's and so, incredible. Yeah, we're going to do one major event sometime at some point. I mean, I don't know when yet, but mass meditation, breath work. That's incredible. Event. Yeah. I love for that. Addicts. Yeah. You know what's funny is that the girl, I have a girl staying with me right now because she just left her, her significant other. And there, um, I was like giving her the golf event and she's like, oh, my friend does this. Or like, uh, my ex is like, rat, like, and it's your, they like work together in like, oh, here. Is it? Brittany. Yes. I know. Yes. yes. Yeah, because my sister-in-law asked, hey, do you know Amy? I was like, yes, I love Amy. She was like, do you know Amy with the purple hair? I was like, fuck yeah, I know Amy <laughs> with, with the, the purple, purple hair. hair. I love that. I'm sorry, yes. I'm be Amy with the hair. I know. Amy with the I hair. Love or that. Amy or with the, the tattoos. tattoos. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. That's good. But yeah, so. Oh, our, so she's living with you? Britt's living with you. Yeah, That's she moved nice. in this week. So you know Eileen and. Eileen's Kendra's oh, best friend. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah small world. Yeah. Not really, though. No, <laughs> no coincidence. Like, yeah, that actually makes <laughs> yeah. sense. Seriously. Yeah, because we're having a golf tournament, and you guys had one last. Well, the, for revive the golf yeah. tournament for yeah. revive. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Speaking of, I should really link that because if you're a golfer or want to give back, it's October 9th. We need golfers. We need all kinds of people for revive. And I'll tell talk, my husband. Don't talk about it enough. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Golfers love those fundraisers. Yeah, yeah they, they eat do. it up. Yeah, they, my husband's literally practicing right now all the time, so he can golf. Yeah, because he's like he plays baseball, so he's like, I've never wanted to try golf because I don't want to fuck up my swing. I'm like, babe, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> you You're can like in this. your thirties. You can you can try golf now. Like, Nonprofit work is a lot, and I mean, and not that you know, I really don't do anything that I do for money because money's actually energy and like all this stuff, right? Like you just like I just yeah, I you wanna, do it to like, help. Have freedom, right? And just like help, but yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm the chair of the board. I created the nonprofit for Revive. So it's just like I'm – it's it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. And I think we didn't know that. And it's like, dude, we just want to fucking help people. Like, why do yeah. we have yeah. to jump through why all these make fucking it so hoops? Hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, yeah, you should probably maybe talk to George about it or something because he was just, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. It's not for everybody. The reason why I like Revive so much is especially now the path that – that I'm going down is like the all pathways. You know, we yep. have the sauna where we're giving out needles 
and all the clean using kits and we're helping so many people because we're just showing up consistently for mm. that and yeah. you know we have the the support groups and the marijuana maintenance group like literally just every for pathway, anybody for anybody yeah. so there Any is no all. box yeah and there's no shame there's no shame there's which no is shame. like Whatever. the biggest thing yeah that's amazing yeah. yeah yeah and so where's that nashua right well we're in nashua dairy and we just opened manchester oh well shit and we do what? all the drug courts yeah buddy that's how i'm in valley street that's how i'm in valley street is through revive interesting yeah, yeah so it's all meant to be yeah 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 that's awesome it all makes sense it, it all, all makes fucking sense. makes sense it all makes sense well we could sit here and chit chat for hours but yeah um let's i'm a grandma and i, know. I go to bed at 7 30 i'm like i just was up every single day at 4 a.m like that's just not <laughs> partying it up then. no shit was lit though oh my god it was incredible there's nothing like miami the energy just when you're like <laughs> having know. fun and it's everyone's the, having fun it's and you're the in latina the music Ooh. like all the yeah. latina music just like i'm just high like high vibes oh. because everybody's having fun yeah. Yeah. yeah it was a blast but i'm grateful to be home and i definitely cannot stay up that late anymore i realized mm. holy shit i'm actually old now um but yeah if there is one thing mm. Our favorite. like one takeaway that you would want our listeners to hear from you, learn from you, get from this entire interview, what would you, what would it be? I would say one, don't give up on yourself. Mm. Don't give up on your journey no matter how dark or twisted it looks like or how many roadblocks you're on. Don't give up. Ask for help if you need help, you know, because for me, that's all I needed, I needed, had I, well, I should say this, like, had I had asked for help, I might have got it sooner. Mm. I was lucky enough that people reached their hand out to me. That's all I needed. So, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help. And, like, if you're listening to this podcast, you're already probably listening to all this incredible information. You have a space to come. You know about this um, beautiful, sacred space. And so, you know. Yeah. Just keep fucking coming to Just this camp. Just keep coming. Coming. Just keep coming. Just keep <laughs> fucking coming. Like, <laughs> white knuckle it through it. Yes. It eventually don't give gets up. better. I love that. Don't give up on yourself. Yeah, don't. That's beautiful. I appreciate you so much. This was incredible. I can't wait to experience a Nourished event. It's on my bucket list for sure. I think events are, I mean, retreats are just incredible. Home? You came, I mean, I mean a retreat. I meant retreat. Yeah. I want to go to like an actual retreat. Yeah, because yeah, you did a breath work. Yes, here with I them. did do the breath yeah. work here, but yeah. I want to go on like. Yeah, the um, retreats are new. Bye, uh, hubby. Bye, kids. Hum yeah, out. <laughs> mama needs self care. Yes, that's what I want to experience yeah. so very badly. And I am like a foodie, so mm. all this food talk. I'm about to leave here and just go get some. Oh, you'll food. love it. Oh, well, I'm excited too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come on your. You guys are gonna do breathworks together. Um, definitely yes. come and yes. get. Um, usually, you know, we care for others. It's nice to be treated too. And yeah, so, for well, sure. that's what I always say when you do them here, and I get yeah. to come. It's like Iris too. Like whenever there's a breathwork event here mm -hmm. that's not facilitated, by, I'm at it because yeah. it's so sound baths like all the things it's so nice to experience yeah. it on the other side like i literally yeah. kept it i'm like are you ready yet? she's on me every are day you ready i love yet? it are you because <laughs> i have 20 people are you in ready? here breathing you and i want to sit here with them and yeah. have them yeah. breathe yeah. Yeah. experience yeah not nothing like it so no. the last one i had on Lionsgate, it was portal mm -hmm. jillian i had it was so funny one of the women screamed <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> like so fucking loud the like best. the best and as soon as she was done screaming motherfucker she started dying laughing yeah. and everyone started <laughs> giggling fucking laughing in breath work like the uh, whole room was giggling and i was just fucking happy like so the best. Like, the best. Just, like, the best. you're just like holy shit i love those childlike giggles they like, I really love when like I'm it. in breathwork and I'm not sobbing and I'm giggling instead. Yeah. Like, yeah. when I'm just, like, hunched like, over, just, like, like, this giggling. is a cosmic yes. joke. Like, it really <laughs> is. Just so <laughs> And we funny. have the cheat code. It's the fucking whoop, cheat code. Whoop. Hell yeah. <laughs> I love you game. both very yes. much. I am. Love Thank you. you for having me. I Thank appreciate it. So and I'm much. pumped for you guys, too. So. I know. I'm for you guys, Nourished. You guys, if you haven't experienced it, you need to. And we will end the same way we start. One hand on the heart, one hand on the belly. Take a big breath in through the nose. Lift up, rise up, fill up. And then let that shit fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
yes. so good. <laughs> Lion's breath. Let it go, baby. <laughs> we love y'all. Love you. Mwah. Peace. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to listen to what we have to say. It means the world. As always, we want to end this episode by reminding you that we are not medical professionals and we are not giving any type of medical advice. We are simply sharing our experience and solutions. We are here with the intentions of reminding you that you are never alone and that everyone's healing journey is unique to the individual. Make sure to follow us on all social media platforms to stay updated. Stay well, sacred rebels. See you next time.